One reason I'm really excited to work on Cymbeline, the, the play, is because nobody comes in to Cymbeline with preconceived notions of what they might expect to see. It's, it's less well known, not a lot of people have, have read it, let alone seen it performed, so it's not like they're walking in and saying, oh, I can't wait to see the scene with the witches, or oh, I can't wait to see the scene with the fairies. It's, it's all going to be a surprise, so we really get to tell them what the world looks like. The process of taking ideas and moving them to the stage on a show like this is, is a really special challenge because the easiest way to think about a show where we're inventing this fantasy time period in these cultures that we know nothing about is to think about just starting from scratch and building every single thing. Uh, the queen, we don't get a lot of stage time for the queen, but she's really important because she really pushes the action of the play forward right at the beginning. So we have to get a sense of, of who she is and, and what her stakes are really, really quickly. Some of the things that I'm going to do with her costume are to make her very, this acidic, poisonous green. And she's going to sort of uh, display her wealth and her status all over herself. So she's going to have this beautiful, pointed, uh, symmetrical waist censure piece that Heather is building and then I'm embellishing. So it'll have tons of beads and crystals and things and, and little bits hanging off of it that will really tell the story of accumulation for the queen. She's going to have a cowl that's made out of jewelry chain. So everything about the queen will be a really beautiful line, but very hard materials. So th there'll be a lot of detail to look for there. And look into people's hair. That's another thing. I'm going to hide all kinds of stuff in people's hair this time. So people will have beads and feathers and uh, making synthetic dreadlocks for many of the characters. So a lot of people, the story of what they carry with them will be from here up. To help the audience track through some of the different changes and disguises and things throughout Cymbeline, certain characters are sort of assigned certain colors that sort of belong to that character and will follow them throughout the show in all of the their disguises and changes and iterations. Imogen and Posthumus own blue. Blue belongs to them. So when we first meet them as sort of a secret married couple, they're both wearing different tones of the same color, and we immediately know that they're connected to each other. And Imogen is wearing um, raw silk. It's this sort of chiton made out of raw silk that is really going to tell the story of how she's sort of strong and rough, but still very tender. And I'm hoping that everything about the drape of the dress will speak to her character and the work that Erin is doing. She has a, a hair piece that will later come off so that she can show herself as a boy. Um, and the, the blue that Imogen and Posthumus share is sort of a little bit of foreshadowing toward her connection to her brothers. So we see them in, in Wode before we, see, before we find out that they're all related to one another, which is great because it's sort of a little connection that might happen somewhere in the brain. And, and then once we find out that they're all related to each other, it's like, oh, of course they are. We knew that because of blue. <laughs>